Bueno, gracias Isabel y espero que todas estas cosas que te quedan por decir saldrán a la hora de, del debate. En todo caso, muchas gracias por esta visión ¿no? de, desde el derecho y donde la enfatizaste muy bien esta ruptura completa ¿no? que, se, que se exige entre esta familia, la familia de origen y la familia adoptante. Gracias. Ahora doy la palabra, que tenemos que hacer un pequeño de cambio de, de mesa para poder usar el PowerPoint. Cuando esté todo listo, hablará el profesor Peter Selman. ¿sí? Que te intervendrá en inglés. First of all, thank you very much for allowing me to talk to you. Um, <clears throat> I'll start with an apology that this uh, is a slot that Diana gave to me, and it is only loosely connected to the other three talks. I want to give a context of what is happening in the world today about intercountry adoption that will, I hope, help you to understand some of the later talks. Most of my slides are numbers and graphs, so not too much English for those of you who only speak Spanish. I want to talk mainly about the fall of intercountry adoption, but over the last 30 years, there's been a huge rise uh, with a peak in 2004 uh, when we had 45,000 worldwide And everybody thought it would go on and on and on, but things never do. And we've seen in the last six or seven years a very dramatic decline, and that's what I will talk about mainly. <coughs> so this graph shows you what's been happening since 2001. Interesting thing is the lines are very similar until recently. So total numbers have gone up and down. Numbers to the top five have gone up and down. Numbers to America have gone up and down, and numbers to Europe. But in the last two or three years, instead of half the children going to the United States, now half go to Europe. And that's been a big, big change. I'll talk about that a bit more. A lot of figures here, and they will be sending you later on a copy of these overheads so that you can look at them at leisure. What I have here is the top five countries and the total numbers. And at the bottom, the proportion of those that go to America. So you can see the fall at the end. The next slide will show the four countries sending most after the United States, and that will put Spain in the context, I hope. Now, suddenly the shapes look rather more out of kinder. And this is because Spain had the most dramatic rise in adoptions and has also had one of the most dramatic falls. So there's been big changes here over the last 10 to 15 years. And this will give us a little bit more time to look at the two parts of the story. First of all, the rise. And you'll see that Spain is... That Spain and Ireland have got mixed up there. It should be Ireland at the top of two, uh, the highest change and Spain second. But Spain and Ireland had the highest rise, and this was a very dramatic change in numbers over this period. And then we look at the changes downwards, and we see again that Spain was one of the countries where there was the biggest fall. So I rushed through those very quickly. That's just to give you some context. What I'm now going to do is to look in more detail at the area that most pertains to what we've talked about so far today, which is the story of the states of origin, the sending countries, the places where the children uh, that adoptive parents care for have come from, and therefore the places where the birth mothers are living. So let's have a look, first of all, at the last 30, 40 years and see where those children have come from. And the first thing to say is that there's a constantly changing story. So that if we go back to the 1980s, Korea was by far the biggest source, and many of the other countries were in South America, and really only Korea and Colombia are countries that have continued. 
Korea is there dropping out to the top, the top six or seven anyway. So Colombia has been there all the time. But otherwise, there's been a big change. And most recently, of course, the arrival of China and Russia as the main sources of children. But they didn't feature in the 1980s. So the history is very different. And if we look at Spain, of course, the story for Spain will be different from the story for France and the story for America. So each country's got its own particular story that has to be told. <clears throat> now, here, what I've done <clears throat> is to show, I hope fairly simply, and I will now slow down the mix, we're talking about the states of origin, changes over the last four or five years. And uh, there's sometimes a picture that when numbers are going down, every country must be sending fewer. And it's never as simple as that. So we can see that the big changes have been recently, first of all, steady fall in the number of children from China. One stage, China was the main source for Spain and seemed to be the main source everywhere. Those numbers, as you can see there, have gone down very dramatically. I'll talk a bit more about China in a minute. Guatemala uh, is an interesting country because it's really sent children only to the United States. And for a long time, the numbers were going up and up and up. And then suddenly, 2007, change and down, down. And uh, in the last two years, the numbers have gone even lower than that. So we're now talking about less than 100 going to Guatemala. This has made a very big difference to America. And there's much anger for parents who had hoped to adopt children from Guatemala and now told no. And the reasons for this are some major, major problems in Guatemala. And this is an indication of one of the reasons for the decline, that in some countries it's because things have gone badly wrong and the receiving countries have said, we don't want to know. China, rather different story. Russia, the numbers have gone down and down. Again, Russia sent many children to the United States, and I'll say a little bit more about Russia uh, in a minute if I've got time. So those three states accounted for nearly, oh, 16,000 change, more change than the actual fall. But elsewhere, the numbers were going up. And so we look down to the bottom half. Most striking is Ethiopia. And Ethiopia, I think, now is the second most important source of children for Spain. So Ethiopia, for many years, sent very few. Suddenly, the numbers have gone up. And I'll say a little more about Ethiopia later on. Haiti is going up there. But if I had added on 2010, uh, something even more dramatic happens. Not in Spain, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then Vietnam, the numbers have gone up, although they're now going down again. So up and down changes all the time. But those countries in those years accounted for extra to counter the big four from the big three. Right, let's have a look at the top four. Okay, these, these are the four countries which since 2003 have sent most children worldwide. And we can see some quite striking changes in all of them. At the top, China, right? Rising until 2005, we all thought it would go on and on and on. A very major source, of course, for single parents. And then suddenly, unexpectedly, big change. Down and down and down. Russia, again, numbers were going up, and then suddenly change. Down and down and down and down. And in America, Guatemala going up and up and up, and then, look at that, almost gone. So the numbers of Guatemala are very striking. And the only continuing rise has been Ethiopia, and that is going to change in the next few years. So we must remember this all the time, that we can never be certain about the patterns worldwide. And <clears throat> if I'd had time, I could have talked about each of these. The problems of the birth mothers in each of these countries is very, very different. The stories are very different as to why children are being sent. Right, let's now have a quick look at the four major continents that send children. Uh, for a long time, it seemed that Asia was always going to be the major source. So until last few years, always half the children came from Asian countries. Uh, initially, it was from the Philippines, from Thailand, uh, more recently, obviously, from China. India continuing, Korea the dominant factor until very recently. <laughs> Um, so for the last 10 years, uh, Asia's counted for well over 40% in most countries. 
and um, the numbers have been falling, so that now the numbers have gone down, and especially in Spain, China is not as important as it was uh, a few years ago. But Asia, above all other countries, has been a source of major concern, and I'll talk briefly about three countries, India, Vietnam, and Nepal, although Nepal will be the subject of a film later on that Marlene's going to show, and I will leave that to Marlene to talk about. However, let's look at China. Now, the China figures here, uh, most of the figures I will show you for the states of origin or the sending countries are the figures I make up, not make up, I estimate, from what I know about the children who we receive. Most countries have not got the resources to give us the full data. Two countries have. Uh, one is China and one is Korea. So these are data uh, for the Hague from China. They only did it once for these five years. And so these figures are pretty accurate. These are the ones that China has recorded as definitely going. And it shows very dramatically the decline. And you can see from that that the decline is greatest in the case of Spain. So Spain has gone down by about 70%, uh, America by about 60%, other countries by about half. But overall, it's a very dramatic change. And that would be interesting enough in itself because it's meant um, probably here, certainly in my country, very long waiting lists for people who've been promised a child or they thought they'd been promised a child. And of course, um, a complete break of hope for those single parents, single mothers, who for a long time had been able to adopt in China and uh, then suddenly were told that this was not possible. So that's a complex figures, and you'll get a set of those to look at in, in due course. But the other change <clears throat> in China has been the nature of the children sent. Uh, for a long time, as we know, they were relatively healthy, young, female babies, infants. And everybody assumed that that's what it was all about. Um, have a look at these figures, and you can see that uh, over time, over the last, this period from 2005 to 2009, is going up. Uh, the number of children with what the Chinese describe as special needs, and these include older children, not specifically sibling groups, but older children, children with minor handicaps. Uh, the number of, in that category has gone from 10% up to about 50%. But it's varied quite a lot over different countries. <clears throat> so the increase has been least noticeable in Australia and Spain, um, and very noticeable in the Netherlands. And one of the reasons why the numbers are much lower in Spain uh, is that uh, the numbers of children being sent are mainly older children. And I'm not sure whether that's a, a decision by the Chinese or a decision by the Spanish that they're not interested in the older children. But this is going to be the future for China, children with special needs, older children. And the gender pattern is changing. So that a quarter of all the children being sent are now boys boys with special needs, older boys. So the pattern, China is now using inter-country adoption in a very different way, and the smaller, younger, healthy children are being placed for domestic adoption as part of the change in their policy on the one-child family. So there's the other four countries that have mattered most. As if we go back in time, you see there that Korea starts off with over 2,000 children a year. You go back to the 1960s, uh, 1960s and the numbers are much, much higher. And those numbers continue high to the 1980s. And uh, the change came really um, later on with the uh, adverse publicity after the Seoul Olympic Games. So Korea is going down, it's going down further. I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. Uh, India has always been low for its size. It's going down. Philippines, fairly steady, going up slightly. And Vietnam, up and down, according to whether there's a crisis. So there's always, always problems there. Um, Korea has sent most children worldwide in the history of inter-country adoption. Uh, latest count was 165,000. That's more than China will ever have sent. China, China's numbers are there. Uh, although Korea, remember, is a small country, uh, they are now placing more children domestically, uh, but the number's high for a country that is a rich country now, a very rich country, with very low fertility. So this strange situation where this rich country, uh, with in a way desperately short of children, so the population is aging, the, the fertility rate is even lower than in Spain. 
And yet they are sending children uh, for interculture adoption.